Уважаемый Владимир Владимирович, мы жители Российской Федерации Курской области, Суджанского района, обращаемся к вам. 6 числа на нашу землю зашел, зашли иностранные войска с натовской техникой. За несколько часов наш город был превращен в руины. Мы, наши родные, мужья, Соседи защищают Донбасс, мы лишились земля, земли, мы лишились домов, мы убежали под обстрелами, бежали среди руин, многие без документов. Хотим обратиться к вам, чтобы вы... Хотим попросить помощи, мы остались одни, мы привыкли к обстрелам, мы поддержали СВО. Суки ненависть! Это твари какие-то, где наше правительство! А наши суки еще хуже! Путин, помои, пожалуйста! Помои, пожалуйста, там все разбивают! Вы, наверное, ничего не знаете, но там страшно отходит, что там... делается! Своих там страшно, что делается! Помогите, пожалуйста! Помогите! Маленький полтора год и восемь! Ребенок чем больница лишь остался без матери! Машина осталась там разбита, я прошу милицию, помогите вывести машину, там документы, там деньги, там все осталось в машине. Ukrainian troops surprise incursion on Russia's Kursk region this week that was the largest ever on Russian territory since the start of the war, has placed President Vladimir Putin in a tough spot. As many as 1,000 Ukrainian troops equipped with 20 armored vehicles and 10 tanks launched an offensive on Russia's Kursk region bordering Ukraine on August 6. The incident marked the first case of Russia being invaded by another country since World War II. Bloomberg Agency has described Ukraine's incursion into Russia as an evident embarrassment of Vladimir Putin. According to Bloomberg, the attack on Kursk undermined the Kremlin's carefully constructed image of Putin as the protector of ordinary Russians. It also exposed fragility of Russian border defenses and boosted Ukrainian troops' morale against the backdrop of the war spilling over to the Russian territory. Grim-faced, Kremlin leader summoned top defense and security officials on Wednesday. Addressing the meeting with heads of security agencies, the general staff, the defense ministry, and the Federal Security Service FSB, Putin described Ukraine's surprise attack on Russian territory as a large-scale provocation. Following the attack Russian Defense Ministry stated that its forces backed by artillery and warplanes didn't allow the enemy to advance deeper into the territory of the Russian Federation, adding that Ukrainian troops suffered heavy losses in the attack. However, according to the Washington-based Institute for the Study of War, as of Wednesday, Ukrainian troops had advanced as much as 10 kilometers into Russian territory. Ukraine has beaten Russia at sea without any warships, a remarkable achievement. But that doesn't mean conventional warships are obsolete, and it's certainly no reason to abandon aircraft carriers, according to former British naval officer Tom Sharp in The Telegraph. First, the Russian Black Sea Fleet was severely limited by its need to operate from bases very close to Ukrainian-controlled territory. Sevastopol and Novorossiysk are within range of Ukraine's arsenal of ground-based drones and Western-supplied missiles. Most of the ships destroyed by Ukrainian drones and missiles were hit while they were on board or at anchor. Secondly, the Black Sea does not create very large waves. A high-speed sea drone is theoretically faster than a ship. The conditions of the Black Sea give the Ukrainians an advantage. Third, in naval warfare, it is critical to have access to airborne radar that can cover hundreds of miles of sea. Radar on a ship cannot see low-flying objects or objects floating beyond its horizon. Russia has been unable to deploy any of its Tupolev 142 maritime patrol aircraft to the theater of operations. It needs them all in the north to ensure the safety of its nuclear deterrent submarines. The Russians lost a precious A-50 radar surveillance plane over the Sea of Azov in January and then another deep in Russian airspace in February. 
This means that Russia's Black Sea Fleet cannot monitor the movements of Ukrainian drones or grain ships in the Western Black Sea. With the proper radar picture from the air, Russia would detect drone attacks as soon as they left the harbor or even earlier, and they could then be intercepted long before they reached their targets. NATO is unlikely to carry out such attacks. This is one of the main reasons why navies need aircraft carriers to carry radar planes, which are the only way to scan large areas of sea and sky. The alternative is air bases on land, but these cannot move, making them perfect targets for drones and missiles. In any naval war, there may not be a single land base available. Fourthly, the Black Sea Fleet ignores one of the basic principles of Navy maneuver. Echeloned defense. Anyone who suggests that Ukraine's success with land-based attack drones will change the nature of naval warfare and or make the Navy obsolete either doesn't understand the Black Sea. The general nature of naval warfare or actually wants a Navy budget. The same goes for many critics of aircraft carriers. Sharp concluded.